largest mass suicides of the enslaved people took place when the Igbo captives from what is now Nigeria were taken to Georgia coast after enduring the nightmare the Middle Passage. The Igbos from what is now Nigeria in Central West Africa are known to be fiercely independent and unwilling to tolerate the humiliations of chattel slavery. Now, near the end of the voyage, as they were close to being disembarked, they boldly rose up and heroically fought back despite being shackled, hands and foot to one another by surprising and overwhelming their captors who commanded the ship and successfully executing at least three of their captors. Now, after escaping the ship and while standing on the dock, they looked around and realized that many white men with high-powered weapons would still be able to arrive and recapture their human cargo. Now, as a result, the Igbo chief began to chant. Orimiri Omambala Buanibia. Orimiri Omambala Kanyika Ejina. Now, this is a prayer to Chuku, a supreme deity of the Igbo spirituality. Now, after declaring that 75 of them committed mass suicide by drowning. Now, the mutiny and the subsequent suicide by the Igbo people was called by many locals. The local people claim that the landing and the surrounding marshes in Domba Creek, where the Igbo, where the Igbo people committed suicide in 1803, were haunted by the souls of the dead slaves. Now, the story of the Igbo who chose death over slavery, which had long been part of the Gula for law, was finally recorded from various oral sources in the 1930s by a member of the Federal Writers Project. Now, the sequence of the events that occurred next remains unclear. It was only known that the Igbo marched ashore singing and chanting, led by their high chiefs, and then at his direction, they walked into the marshy waters of Dumba Creek committing mass suicide. Roswell King, a white overseer on the nearby Pierce Butler Plantation, wrote the first account of the incident. He and other men, identified only as Captain Pater's son, recovered many of the drowned bodies. So apparently, only a subset of the 75 Igbo rebels drowned. 13 bodies were recovered, but others remain missing, and some may have survived the suicide episode, making the actual number of dead uncertain. Now, while so many historians from centuries have casted doubt on, on the Igbo landing mass suicide, suggesting that the entire incident was a mere legend than the fact. The account Roswell King and other provided at that time we are verified by the post-1980 research, which used modern scientific techniques to reconstruct the episode and confirm the factual basis of the land standing oral account. In September 2002, the St. Simon's African American Community organized a two-day commemoration with the event related to the Igbo history and a procession to the site of the mass suicide. 75 attendees came from different states across the United States as well as Nigeria, Brazil and Haiti. The attendees designated the site as a holy ground and called for the souls to be permanently at rest. Igbo landing is now the part of the curriculum for the coastal Georgia schools.